So we're going to talk about all the classes, but we're going to focus today on the deck and the card class, because your first programming part of this that's due the following week is to just be able to deal cards into a recycler view. That's all you got to do. So let's focus on the deck and the card class. name 
name is going to be some concatenation of the suit and the face. Let's look at, because I, I posted a deck of cards. And you can do it differently than, than, than this if you want, but I think this is a good thing to use. a folder for each of the suits and then all of them are named with the value of their face. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ace, jack, king, queen. And I have a back of the card image as well. That's just the back of the card in case you need to do that. You don't really need to do that for this assignment. You're just going to be dealing cards. So, it's going to look something like this. The image name is probably going to be something like this. The suit name plus the plus a slash, plus the face value name. And that's the image name. Another method that you're going to have here is you're going to have, that would be useful, let's put it this way, you don't absolutely have to have it, but as a suggestion, is you could do a, uh, a two-string function. Many classes have a two-string function that gives you just a short description of what's contained in the object. In this case, the two-string function would probably concatenate the face value, a space, and then the suit name. That's kind of a... Uh, if you can't get the image thing working, hey, do it with the names of the cards instead. All right, that's, that's something that you could do. Plus, it could be useful for debugging and just in general. I would assume, I would hope, that every one of you could write, right now, a class that did this. Because there's really nothing... Uh, extraordinary about it. There's a couple of attributes, three attributes. You're going to have constructors that set those attributes. All right, a couple constructors, one defaults whether it's shown or not. Uh, there's get and sets for the attributes. There's get image name, which again, keep in mind, I'm not writing Java instructions here. I'm just describing what the instruction is going to look like. And then a two string method. So I would assume all of you could write a class that looks like that. All right? This is a very, very, very straightforward class. As I mentioned, someone made the suggestion last time, and it was, it was a good suggestion, but of putting in the valuation of the card in here. 
And I kind of said no, because uh, cards can have different values in different games. Uh, in Rummy, if I'm not mistaken, non-face cards count for five. All right? In other games, they have different values. So I wouldn't put it, that's not really a function of the card, that's a function of the game that the card's in. So that belongs with the rules of the game, not with the card itself. All right, so I wouldn't put in anything dealing with the valuation. Very straightforward class, okay? Now, let's talk about the deck class and what's going to be in the deck class. All right. A deck class has what in it? It has 52 cards. There's always that 52 cards. Well, we're not going to worry about jokers, all right? But does it always have 52 cards in it? Uh, a regular card. It, well, we, maybe we're splitting hairs here, but it always starts out with 52 cards. But as we deal cards, it will have less than 52 cards, all right? So again, this is a structure that needs to have accommodate a variable number of cards. And as we know from our discussions, an array list would be a good structure to have that. So we're going to have in this an array list of cards. And we'll call that cards. Now, follow whatever naming convention you want so that it makes sense, right? Follow the basic Java naming convention where your class names are capitalized and so on. But like if you want to call this card list or deck of cards or whatever, that's fine. I'm calling it cards. Notice it starts with a lowercase, which indicates it's an attribute. It's not a class or an object. How do we make a deck? What's our constructor for a deck look like? All right. Pardon me? Face value and suit. What about those? You would. All right. Let's imagine we were making a deck by hand. All right. We were handwriting a deck. What would you do? All right. You'd grab a card. You would write on the card the face value and the suit. You'd write the next card, face value and suit. You'd probably do it in order, right? Because, like, I wouldn't first make the seven of diamonds, then the six of hearts, because after I've done about 40 of them, it's like, did I make the six of diamonds and seven of hearts or seven of diamonds? You'd go in sequence, right? So what we're going to do to make our card is we're literally going to think of this as a constructor. There's definitely real world parallels here. If you were making a deck of cards, you would loop through all the suits, and for each suit, you would loop through the different face values. So I said here, maybe we have a couple static arrays in this table, in this uh, class. All right, static arrays. And we can loop through those. So, I'm going to loop through list of suits. For each suit, again, now I'm not writing Java here. So this is a disclaimer. I'm describing what the function is going to do. For each suit, I'm going to loop through the face values. And I'm going to make a card. How do I make a card? I call the constructor. And 
and I pass it. The suit and the face value. That's how I make a card. And then I add the card to the cards array list. So that's a constructor. That's how I make a deck of cards. All right. Now, if I do that, the cards are going to be in order, right? I'm going to have the two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts, five of hearts, six of hearts, seven of hearts, all the way through ace of hearts. Then I'm going to have the two of spades, three of spades, four of spades. Well, that's not a very good card game to play. All right. So what am I going to do after I make all these? cards, I'm going to shuffle the deck. How do I shuffle a deck? I'm going to hope, all right, this is where my laziness comes in handy, all right, because face it, i got better things to do than writing a function to shuffle a deck of cards, right? i got video games to play and books to read and stuff like that. So I'm going to hope someone has done that for me. I'm going to hope that there's a method to shuffle cards. Because if you think about it, that's probably a kind of involved method. Like to really make sure everything's random. It's probably fairly involved. So I'm going to go and look to see if there's a way to shuffle a array list. That's, I mean, the advantage of using these built-in classes in the Java framework, is they provide some sort of built-in functionality. So, I could do a search for Java, array list, randomize. Oh, I have a question. Shuffle or randomize a list of Java. Oh, looky here. Collectionized, a collection shuffle is used to shuffle lists in Java. I'll give you a nice little example there. So, here's a Java syntax. Collections.shuffle and put in your list there. I love how that pop-up was like perfectly timed to when I was just getting to this line of syntax I wanted to show, right? Someone, the, 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 the social media person here really is on the ball. So I'm going to shuffle it. So I'm just going to do that. All right. Now here's the nice thing. I guess it's a nice thing. When you're designing the class, you don't necessarily have to know if this exists or not. Because you know you're going to have to shuffle it. And you know either you're going to have to write the shuffle routine or hopefully there will be a pre-written shuffle routine that you can use. So if I was designing this class, I would just put in, after I create the classes, I'm going to shuffle the deck. So that's a constructor of a deck. We have within a loop, loop for each suit, for each face value, call the card constructor to create a card, add that card to the card array list. When we're all done with these two loops, shuffle the deck. So after we finished the constructor, all right. After we've considered, finished the constructor on the uh, deck, we have a 52 card deck of cards that is in a random order, which is what we want to display, uh, what we want to, to play the game with. So, okay, what else do we need to do with the deck? What else?
else do we do with the deck besides make it and shuffle it? We really do need a, a field trip to the casino if you don't know what people do with the deck after they've shuffled it. A deal. Deal it out. Yeah. yeah, deal it. So, what do you think, what's the argument? Are there any arguments to the deal function? Yes. Possibly. Repeat that, please. If you deal 21 to the other person, just that. Okay. These are, these are true statements. All right. These are true statements in the sense that, yes, we're dealing two cards. We're going to deal two cards each. And, yes, if we deal a 21, then that person wins and we don't need to go further. Those are both true statements. But they're not really answering the question I asked. All right. Do I always deal two cards? No. If I was actually playing this, and I wish I brought a deck of cards. Does anyone happen to have a deck of cards? All right. No one running a three-card money game in the college center for spare change or anything, right? Uh, let's imagine I have a deck of cards. And I'm not just talking about blackjack. I'm talking about any game. When I deal cards, how does it work? Let's say we're both playing. I deal one to you, one to myself. One to you, one to myself. If we're playing a larger game where there's four people involved, one to you, one to you, one to you, one to you. Even if we're playing blackjack, I don't deal two to you and then two to me. I deal one, 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 one. All right? So, do I really need an argument on the deal function? No. What does a deal function do? If I ask the dealer, deal me a card, what do they do? They take the top card and give it to someone. So, I don't need to tell them anything because they're always going to give me one card. What do you think the return value is going to be? No, not really. If I deal a card, if you're in a blackjack game and I give you a card, what did I give you? Okay, go ahead. You give you a card, right? So that's the return value of this function. This function returns a card. Every time, if let, let's say this dealer was operating on my orders, all right, or there's a robot dealing, all right, and I said, deal, what's they're going to give you? They're going to give you a card. Deal. They're going to give the next person a card, and so on. So, the deal function... accepts no arguments, all right, and it returns a card. Now, which card does it return? Well, what card from the deck does it return? The top card, right? Better be the top card or someone's cheating. Right? So the dealer better be giving you the top card. What do you suppose a top card in a deck is? If we have an array list, right? Sub zero, Sub -zero right? So the card that I'm going to return equals cards get sub zero. That probably is a Java language statement, all right? I get the object at position zero, and I store it in a cards variable. Now, when I deal it to you, what happens then to the deck? 
the deck gets smaller by one card. There's one less card. So, is there a function to remove something from an array list? Well, again, being lazy, I show you something. an array list. Oh, looky here. Array list remove will remove the index. I can either remove, I could do one of two things. I could either remove the card or remove the, so I could get to work both ways. The answer is yes, there is a remove method. this is the array list and my phone is a card. Okay. If I get rid of it out of the array list, card still exists okay. and I can put it somewhere else. Okay, gotcha. All right? I can give that. In strictly speaking in object oriented terms, by doing this, there's still a pointer to that card object. So therefore garbage collection won't grab it. All right? So I can remove the card from the array list, there's still a pointer to it. And I'm going to return that pointer to somewhere, and somewhere is going to store that card. All right, I'm going to put it maybe in a different array list. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it, and, and you know, we could talk about it. Well, I think it's probably about time to talk about it because we're going to go on to the next part of actually displaying these on the screen once I figure out what time it is. There we have a few more minutes. Okay. Really, this is probably everything you need for these two classes. If there's anything else, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Maybe we'd have a, especially for just playing a single hand of blackjack. All right, if we were playing like multiple hands of blackjack with the same deck, then we'd get more complicated and all that. But for the basic round of playing a single hand of blackjack with a deck of cards, this will probably get you through. So, let's think about our GUI. Just focusing on dealing cards right now. I got an adapt uh, a uh, array list. Uh, no, I no, I don't. I have a recycler view. I got a button to deal and a button to clear. Okay. So, what do I have layout wise? I have my activity. I have a 
card XML, which is a single image view, and it's going to be used to put the cards in the recycler view. I have my activity. I have a listener on the button. My activity creates a deck class. Okay? Creates a deck class. That does what? It does everything that was on that previous screen. Right? It runs through the suits, runs through the face values, calls a constructor, makes 52 cards. I have a adapter. And I have an array list of cards here called list let's say, and I have an array list of cards here. When I create the adapter, I pass in what? I pass in a pointer to that list. All right? Remember the whole idea of an adapter. I have something in the activity that is accumulating these things that are going to get added. All right. I pass that to my adapter. All I have to do then is update that array list. All right. Tell the adapter, hey, your data has changed, and the adapter will go do its thing. So when I click the button, I ask my deck for a card. Whatever my deck is called. I call deal. All right? It gives me a card. I add that card to my array list. And then I tell the adapter the data has changed. I don't remember the name of that instruction off the top of my head, but we've seen it in all the array all the uh, recycler view adapters. Then the adapter does its thing. All right? It inflates it inflates the uh, card view, all right, the card XML. It asks each card in the array list what's your image, and it sets the image to the image in the view. So we covered a little bit about the activity, not the whole game, but to deal it at least. What else do we need? What other objects do we need? What other classes do we need? We're going to need some place to put the dealer's hand and the player's hand. We could make a class for that, or we could just store them as array lists in here. All right. So we could either make a class or make an array list. So, pardon me? Right. We're going to need something that knows the rules of blackjack. That is, if I have a queen and a seven, what's the value of my hand? 17. We need something that has that code in it. All right. We need something that keeps track of whether the dealer should take a hit or not. That code, that logic needs to be somewhere. We have to have the ability to, to compare two hands and say which one wins. Or say if a hand is busted, in other words, over 21. So you, part of your job in designing this for next week is decide where you're going to put those things. Where are you going to put the hands of the player, the hands of the dealer? The hand of the player, the hand of the dealer. All right? Where are you going to put the rules that say, what a hand scores. Does this hand beat that hand? Um, are they busted? Whatever. So you have 
have to decide those things. So that's the part of the design that's sort of left to you. All right. My suggestion is to, as you're working on this, all right, go back and recreate the design of those things. By design, ideally I want a class diagram. There's a segment, there, there's a resource on class diagrams. Class diagram essentially will have a block for each class, will have the attributes and methods listed. Actually, I changed my mind. You can do that if you want, but you don't have to. You can just write in a Word document. I have this class, these attributes, these methods, along with a brief description of what the method does. All right. Any questions? All right. We'll see you over in lab.